Well, my name is Josiah and I am a Click developer. My project is the LAPD violent crime analysis from 2010 to 2022. So in this project, we look at the violent crime in one of the largest cities in the United States to see if we can see any trends or issues that arise. To start with, Los Angeles is the home to approximately 4 million residents with a police force with approximately 10,000 sworn officers. Now, these officers are encompassing or patrolling an area encompassing 468 square miles, which uh, is covered in 21 districts. So in my dashboard, we're going to be taking a look at the violent crimes that are committed within that uh, area and time frame. So to create this report, I connected to two different data sets. It was a main data set and a legacy data set. Then I transformed my data and created a star schema data model to begin creating my visualizations. Now, the first thing to do was to create my main KPIs. So for my main KPIs, I, I created one for the uh, violent crime, violent crime uh, per day, year over year percentage, unsolved violent crime, and then unsolved violent crime year over year percentage as well. And then I added in an average age of the actual uh, victim. With this report, I was able to spot uh, positive and negative insights in the data. So for the positive insights, I found that there was a downtrend of unsolved cases of intimate partner aggravated assault cases, which is domestic violence, where in some districts, there was actually a 100% closure rate for the year of 2013. Then for my negative insights, I was showing an increase of unsolved rape and forcible cases in 2022, where there's actually a high of a 77% unsolved rape cases in, in 2022. So we're going to take a quick look now at my dashboard so we can kind of see what's going on. This is going to be an overview of the violent crime in LA, showing us our, our per year, how the city itself is doing with crime, as well as how the police are doing in solving said crime. So this is my dashboard here. It's filtered down based on the year of the actual uh, year of the crime we want to look at. So we can go from here from 2010 to 2022. Right now we're looking at 2015. It shows the number of crimes you've had. Again, these are my KPIs, the, the per day, year over year, unsolved cases, et cetera. We can then filter out that time based on the months of the year we're looking at. We can also filter it down by the um, types of crime. Like for this one, our robbery case, we can take a look at our rob robbery itself to see then how we're doing in, uh, how the police are doing basically with the uh, robbery percentage. On my map, it shows the actual precincts themselves and it's done based off of a heat for the uh, unsolved violent crime percentage. And of course, the higher it gets into the red, the worse off their unsolved case rate or the higher their unsolved case rate is. And then uh, after that, we can take a look at the time frame on a per day rate in terms of when said crime is being committed. As you can see, the majority of our crime is committed somewhere between 6 p.m. and about 3 a.m. And that's based on this. And of course, you can filter this down by time frame as well to kind of see what types of crimes are being committed and then in what areas and how they're doing in terms of their unsolved rate. So the main question is, how does this report help us? Like, what is its purpose? Well, in 2009, in 2009 the LAPD had an approval rate of 77%. The citizens of LA believed in their police department and that they could protect and serve them as their motto suggests. And then today, the approval rate is actually at an all-time low of 30%, which is lower than the, uh, than the approval rating after the Rodney King fiasco. So the big question is, what happened? How did they lose the confidence of their residents? Well, the George Floyd incident in Minnesota changed America's view of police and caused a massive movement for defunding the police. And for the officers of the LAPD, they now had to police a city that thought of them as the enemy. And the residents there were scared every time they saw an officer because they now thought of them as killers. And so the animosity between the police and the citizens was palpable. So what effect did this have? Well, ABC7 did a report in July of last year that showed the number of murders committed in the first six months to see a trend in LA. I took that trend, took that uh, report and kind of ran with it and created my own sub report to kind of view this information in the same way. So at a quick glance, we can kind of see that the homicide itself mirrors the report from ABC. It kind of shows on our year trend. Now, this is actually on a full year trend except for 22, which ends in July. So as we can see on this one, um, we can kind of see the year, year trend, the unsolved rate, as well as the total, total homicides, which we then can filter this down if we needed to. So I did the same report itself for robbery, rape, and domestic violence to get a broader overview of these crimes. So when I looked at these, I found some, some interesting things in the data. So to start with on the rape, I found a shocking statistic. How we see it here, we're looking at our this is the average number of days between when an incident happened and when it was reported to the police. 175 days is the average. I have it split into two different times because this data I found is actually a little skewed, and I'll, I'll get to that here in a moment. This is kind of the average of what the number of days was. So it's still eight days after an incident happened before somebody then goes and reports it. When I looked at this data itself, I was able to filter down, say, in 2011. The average was 31 days. 
or nine if you if you kind of take without the actual SKU data. But then going from here to 2021, you can see that the days go to 402 days. And as you can see down here, this is the actual incidents themselves. They're showing about 4,000 days on some of these cases, which is why I said the data was skewed, because that's how long it took for somebody to report the incident. And as you can see in the description of it, it shows that it was a child who had an incident happen that then they reported later on. So how did this get so skewed? Well, in recent years, in recent uh, last couple of years, we had the Me Too movement come up where women actually were empowered to come forward and then bring about what the incidents that happened to them. So that's how they were able to then present this information recently. And so that's why I think this information was skewed. And then we look at our next one, which will be the last one I show on this is the robbery cases, which is one of the worst in terms of actual unsolved crime rate. We're looking at almost an average of or average of 61% unsolved for any robbery. So you are likely, if you get robbed, you are one third of the population is likely to not get justice for their robbery. And that robbery is like when somebody assails you or actually holds you at gunpoint. So when I'm looking through this data and all of this information, I wanted to find a story to tell to kind of help make this data real. So you kind of have an understanding of what's going on. So I want to introduce you to Randy Galvin. Randy Galvin was a father who had experienced something that no father should ever have to. On December 7th of 21, at around 3.30 p.m., Randy's son, Jeremy, was out front of the school for witnesses to say he got into an altercation with another teenager. And then during their argument, that teenager pulled out a gun, and then Jeremy was shot. Police were on a foot patrol in the area. And uh, they arrived at the scene where Jeremy was unresponsive and shortly after was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, the police apprehended a person of interest. However, there have been no suspects arrested or resolution for Randy. Now, this is just one of many cases where there's a crime that happens that goes unsolved. So the question is, that, did the police not do their job? The response time to the shots was immediate. So how did this case go unsolved? My, my thoughts are that people are afraid to talk to the police, both from a standpoint that they're afraid of the police themselves and also because they're afraid of the people that then committed the crime. There was another incident that happened uh, where an, uh, involving a 12-year-old boy not 24 hours prior to this incident where he was shot and killed while he was in a motor vehicle with his mother. That happened, that, that happened on December 6th. Now, on, Dece on September 30th of 22, the police made an arrest of two individuals for that crime. It took them almost a year to find the actual suspects who actually committed this crime to then get resolution for Mr. For Mr. Alvarado. So the big question is the police can't get information from the public. They can't solve cases. If the public views the police as killers, they're not going to talk to them. So then how do we handle this? It's one of the biggest things I think we see in this in the issues between the police and, and the civilians is how to then resolve that issue. So I found another issue in the sense of uh, there's uh, the district attorney of Los Angeles has a soft on crime mentality where they let criminals out on bail for like or fail to charge them for nonviolent offenses which makes it difficult then for the police to administer the law, because if, if a suspect who trespasses or steals never goes to court, then why would the police continue to then stop and investigate the cases where that occurs? So if they stop the policing and enforcing the law, then the public loses faith in the police. And that's unfortunately, I think, where we're at. So with this data, I would utilize my dashboard along with a solid dashboard to include officers on duty, routes that they cover, uh, staff in terms of like specialized units such as like crime or gang or homicide, and then they could show the gaps of coverage and how to rectify that specific situation. And so that's how I would utilize my dashboard to then solve this problem. Uh, thank you for your time. And that is the end of my presentation.